If you need a wireless microcontroller, you normally take an ESP32. However, the ESP32 first of all can be difficult to get certified, secondarily it's physically large, and well, the analog peripherals aren't exactly perfect. In that case, ST Microelectronics Blue NRG family is quite interesting, but sadly debugging them is quite difficult and also there are some gotchas during certification. In this video, first of all, I will demonstrate you how to debug an application using the ST Microelectronics Blue NRG debugging kit and secondarily, I will also be giving you some personal thoughts about how the whole certification problem after 2014 has played out or how it will play out. So with that, let's go. What you see here is the evaluation board, which you can buy from Mauser et al. And you see here a 20 pin JTAG connector. And now if you've been using an ST-Link in the past, you might also be looking at this little connector here. Well, this little connector, it's indeed a connector, but you are not allowed to use it under any circumstances because it's connected to this processor and not to the actual blue NRG. And so if you use this connector, you only overwrite the serial bootloader and this is a catastrophe because you cannot replace this serial bootloader because ST doesn't give you the code. And secondarily, because the blue energy, in some circumstances, it gets into a special mode where it can only be controlled by this bootloader. So if you use this connector, maybe you have to throw away the whole 100 euro board. So always only use this end. And another important aspect, because I've been talking about a serial bootloader. This board is not like the normal nucleo boards where you have a debugger on the planar. This is purely a serial terminal for installing code and for accessing some UART data. For everything else, you need an external commanding device. And in terms of commanding device, this is the only one which works. It must be an ST-Link V3 set. You cannot use an ST-Link V2, you cannot use a clone, and you can also not use the debugger found on the Nucleo board. Okay, in theory there is an alternative firmware from Sega for the Nucleo, which you can use in theory, but in practice this is not something you want to do. Buy this thing and yes, after you've bought it, there still is some work to do. Well. The next step is assembling the cable. If you are saying, of course, you visit TME and you buy one for like one and a half euros, but at this point I was so pissed that I just wanted to finish the job. And so I went to my local little electronics shop and they sold me this thing. It's like a connector kit. You see, it goes together like this. Here there are some grooves where the flat band cable will fit. And here there are little like snouts and they will bite into the cable when it's all pushed together. And finally, here's a groove. Well, you don't really need to worry which side the groove goes, because for this cable, I don't care whether the red is on the right or the wrong side. But what is important is these are coded. So they need to either both be that way or both be that way. And well, now it's time to actually crimp. For this, I'm going to be using my ultimately crappy vice, but it's better than nothing because I don't want to buy another tool just because of this crap. I've already got 50 other crimpers and I'm starting to tire. So we're going to do it like this. Once again, watch that the snout is on the right side. Start assembling it a little bit. and try to make sure that before you push it together, the little grooves are inside. I'm gonna do this off camera because then it's easier for me to look at it with my eyes. And yes, this is the wrong way around. I'm an idiot. That's the way to do it. 
You see that these little teeth can bite into the cable. So now off camera I've checked, I've pushed it together with my hands as good as I can and now it gets important. You want to hold it together and you ram in one side of the thing into the vise, which is a bit shit, I told you this vise is shit. And then you try to close it. You see here you try to close it and you'll hear a little knack sound and then you know that one end has locked. You see here it has almost locked and now it's time to get the other end in as well. And of course ideally if your vice wouldn't be so utterly shit it would be a bit easier to do but hey ho. So we've got that. Click. Time to tear it apart and we see it actually looks pretty civilized. If you buy the ST-Link version 3, which we need, you get all of this stuff. It's the actual ST-Link, then we have some expansion frame and then we have this thing here where we have this port which we need for connecting to the blue energy and where incidentally the cable is missing. But either way, if you just want to play with the ST-Link and only use it for the blue energy, we need to start to assemble the unit. And for this, you see here we've got this screwdriver, which they included for us. I could have used my Makita, but I'm too lazy. Take this open. It's a bit... Ah. Never get old. And so now here we see the actual ST-Link. And this is the connector, the main connector. And these are the two external connectors. And we just need to put this on top of one another and basically ram it together. And I'm really not sure how you ever want to take this apart again. So, well, I'm going to do it off camera that I can see better and then it should stay together, hopefully. Yeah, and I'm back. I've put it together. And then, of course, the next step is installing this expansion frame BS here. And, of course, I got it wrong because I'm an idiot. So let's try our luck. Oh, it goes out. We take it apart again. This goes in here. So this is probably going to be fitting on top of this somehow. It's going to... It's gonna go like this, somehow like this. <laughs> this is gonna go on top of this. Like so, but we need to be careful to have the connector alignments correct. But of course, because we want to be able to screw it together, we need to install such a spacer thing here. It's right in here. Let's see if it even fucking fits. Yes, it does. So we put it together. Got it together. Then we have another one of these things which goes in here into the other spacer. And then we can finally reassemble it somewhat like this. And, and because this totally surprises no one, I've now verified this doesn't fit. So SGS Thompson included us a non fitting bottom. And well, because it's a non-fitting bottom, maybe I can jury rig something like this. Please, my woodworking friends, look away. This also includes you, kid. I don't want you to send me an email how I'm making a muppet of myself in public. 
Hey, bull crap, forgive me. That's some real BS. Maybe like this. <laughs> yeah, like this, it seems to somewhat fit together so that at least it doesn't short out on my desk. I mean, a quality construction looks different. Maybe I will 3D print myself something in the future. But either way, this beautiful contraption is our programming device for the STM32. <laughs> beautiful. Just like the rest of the work with the blue energy. And yes, I didn't even have to print something or design something myself. You see here by a dude named Adef on Thingiverse, there's something which is ready to print. It took me about two hours to print and it fit pretty well once I removed the grates here on this side. And now it's time to get cracking. First of all, we only connect the blue NRG board to the workstation and we don't connect either the ribbon cable or the ST-Link V3. And then we go here into the blue energy 2 navigator and we click flash and run for the hello world example. You might now say that I've gone stupid, but nope, this is mandatory because the blue energy evaluation board also has a sensor connected to the JTAG pins. And in many cases, if you try to directly connect and something is accessing the sensor, in Kyle, you will get an error saying target not found. And then you think it's a hardware problem, but actually it's just the code. So always before starting your work, install this thing here. And now you see, I've connected my ST link and I've pushed the reset button on the board once. And now we still need to go here, flash, configure flash tools. And we see here, use ST-Link debugger. And you see here, it found my ST-Link and it even found the blue energy target. Very important here, the port mode must be SW and not JTAG. And then if we've got all this, we can click here, debug, and then you see it's the normal Kyle chaos, which you can like or which you can dislike. Very important, you cannot use Kube IDE or Etolic. This is a Kyle only affair. Well, we've got the debugger running and now it's time to look at certification. But before I have a request, I need you guys to like and subscribe. It's just one click. I make like two videos a month. So please don't leave me hanging. And another important thing, I'm not a lawyer. I've done my fair share of legal maneuvering, both for offshore and also for offenses against the Anna. But I have never ever worked in trademark law and basically all what I'm saying now is just me thinking out loud. Everything of course is fictional and we are not talking about the Bluetooth SIG, but we are talking about the company which makes ham rolls. Let us take it from the horse's mouth, not from SGS, but from their competitor Laird. They brought this in 2014 and essentially, you see that the Bluetooth SIG charges everybody who wants to make a Bluetooth product a fee for listing and certifying the product. And if you don't list and certify it, they will go after you. And the interesting thing is, of course, the Bluetooth SIG owns the Bluetooth trademark, so they can always go after you for infringing their trademark. So, theoretically, you might say, well, if I simply don't use the name Bluetooth, what happens? And the answer to this is a bit complex and quite interesting. Here we've got Dorit Mendel's Ham Roll Making Company. Ham Roll Making Company. And here we've got my company. It's a business. 
very important. This is purely a business. If this is a natural person, the situation is completely different. But at the moment, we want to act as a business. Here's Dorit Mendel's timeline. She sells me a ham roll. Now I own this ham roll. And during the transfer of this ownership, something is happened which in Austrian law is called a Schöpfung or the fatigue. And due to this fatigue, she also transfers me the right to sell on the ham roll, for example, to Fauchus Kfd. So I can pass on the ham roll to Fauchus and implicitly a license for Dorit's patents is also transferred to Fauchus. But now comes the trick. Because these are all businesses, there is a concept, it's called the freedom of contract. This means that essentially we can make a contract with one another and this contract then supersedes the local law. And if Dorit now gets to trick, she tricks me to sign a contract where I say I am willing to forego the fatigue, then if I sell the ham roll to Fauchus, she can either go after me or in some cases either go after the customer. And now comes the interesting question. If I visit the website of the Bluetooth SIG and I look specifically for information on how to handle an uncertified product, I find this. And if I look here and I want to get the policy, you see what happens. I have to join the SIG and the previous version of the document, I also have to join the SIG. And by joining the SIG, of course, I sign a contract. Well, this is just something which I wanted to mention. And well, you can think of this what you want. Just a legal disclaimer. What they are doing here is perfectly legal because there is the concept of the caveat emptor or caution to the buyer. And nobody is pointing a pistol at the back of my head to sign in here. So once again, what they are doing is perfectly legal. Well, with that, I thank you very much for listening. Before we go, one important thing. If any one of you has ever had a legal fight with the ham making company, uh, sorry, of course, with the Bluetooth SIG, then please leave a comment or email me and we can also talk about it anonymously, but I definitely want to hear your experiences. So, thank you very much.